Hey guys, it's Courtney with The Kitchen Garden and today I'm going to be harvesting sweet potatoes out of my raised beds. So it is a balmy 75 degrees outside even though it's November. So we've got some unseasonably warm temperatures. I've got my gloves, I've got my Rue apron which has a great pouch for harvesting um, bulky harvests um, without having to try to hold them in your hand or holding an extra basket. It's going to be using this. Um, you'll see the vines are flowing over the side of the bed and I'm going to start by cutting all of those off and um, setting them to the side to kind of dry out so that I can use those um, in the compost bin once they're good and dry. Um, and then we'll start harvesting the sweet potatoes. So let's get started. Okay, so I decided to start with my little burn ring raised bed because the sun is coming up over the house. So it's getting kind of bright over there. I wanted you to be able to see. So I had just planted one sweet potato slip here um, and I planted these uh, during the summer. And, <coughs> excuse me, they have climbed up this trellis. Um, this is that obelisk trellis that I posted about in the, my garden favorites. And, um, Love it, but the sweet potato vines look beautiful on it, especially when they bloom. So let's see what we've got here. And just like, so sweet potatoes and regular, um, you know, white potatoes are different in that um, they're really not the same kind of plant, okay? Um, but one thing that is similar is that if your sweet potatoes are exposed to the sun, they are going to get the same kind of green cast on them as um, your regular Yukon or, you know, yellow potatoes that you grow in the spring. So let's see what we've got here. So here are the vines all coming off and I can just break them off. I left my pruners over there. If you got a good pair of pruners, that would be helpful too. I don't want to come off. There we go. Okay. So again, you can take these vines and go ahead and set them out in the sun to dry out and then add them to the compost. I have heard, did I hear that sweet potato leaves are edible? I haven't gone down that rabbit trail yet, but maybe one day. All right. They're so pretty. And you could probably root some of these to use in planters as, um, you know, a nice uh, trailing element to a planter or a window box or something like that. So use them if you, if you can. All right. Let's see what we've got here for sweet potatoes. Look at that, you guys. You see those? Aren't those beautiful? Okay, this one is a little bit green. Look how... <laughs> it kind of looks like a... Hey, Minnie. Um, sea monster? <laughs> Snake? Um, probably going to cure it anyway and just see how it goes. Um, one of my friends who's a farmer, we had the discussion about green potatoes because I've always heard, don't eat them, they're poisonous. Um, but really, you have to ingest a lot in order for them to affect you. So this is like a little bit of green, so we might just roll with it. All right, here's something that didn't develop quite. Hmm. This one might be good to put in a planter as well and just let it grow um, the foliage again so you'll have some trailing foliage. Okay, back to the task at hand. Got more, and this was just one slip. Oh. She's a butte clerk. That's gorgeous. And it's okay, it's got a little split in it. You know what, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and cure it anyway. A little baby. Oh, we got more. It's going deep. And the great thing about planting these in raised beds is that, um, Raised beds obviously have loose soil because you're not walking on them and compacting it. So your potatoes are really easy to harvest. I think that's all she wrote, but for one slip, that's not bad. 
So let me go see what the, the larger raised bed has. Well, I put about four slips in that bed. Um, and then I had some over in the row garden. So we'll check all of that and see what our potato haul looks like for this season. And then we'll talk about how to cure them. Thanks guys. All right, this is our second spot. So again, it's under the garden grid and I've trimmed all these, trimmed all these vines away before we started. And this is our first harvest here. So let's see what we've got. Beautiful. Wow. These are a little bit smaller, so funny. They're planted right next to each other. Nice. Beautiful. Let's dig down and see. I just love the consistency that the garden grids give with watering. Um, I can never really tell. Oh, here's another one from the other. What, um, how much water my plants are getting with my soaker hoses. Um, these have a much more consistent flow to them and so it's easier for me to tell how much um, water I'm actually giving my plants when I water them with this. And gosh, just look at this great soil, y'all. So I'm actually gonna um, <clears throat> um, plant some carrots now after this. This is to be a really warm week, it's unseasonably warm. So I'm gonna plant some carrots so that they can germinate um, and then grow over the winter. Cause you know that cold really produces some delicious sweet carrots. All right, so this might be all that that slip gave us. But man, that soil feels awesome, y'all. It's so nice. All right, beautiful. All right, I got one more over here. This was a mamma jamma at the top, but it's got a little bit of the green from being exposed to the light. Um, we'll see how it cures up. A bit more of the limbs or vines. Let me see if I can tug them out. Ah. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to let those vines dry out and put them in the compost, chop them up, put them in the compost. So if you're thinking like this is from two slips, really, I'm working on the third slip and this is how many potatoes I've been able to harvest from just those few plants. That's really impressive. And my family loves some sweet potatoes. So we'll be eating those. Look at this bad boy. And that one's split too, but we're still gonna cure them. Still gonna eat them. No sense letting things go to waste. Goodness. So for the next season, I'll probably look into the cause of why these split. They just, did I leave them in too long? They just got too big. Or is there another reason? Um, because maybe we'd like to try to avoid that in the future, and I haven't had that issue before. So let's see. Those are some big potatoes coming out of that one. I feel another one down here. Let's. Oh yes. Okay. Another worm. You know, I used to be super squeamish about worms <laughs> and bugs. But the longer you garden, the more it's like, you know what? We're all serving a purpose here. Just saw another one that's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys, I think that might be it for three slips. I've got a fourth one over here I'm gonna harvest. Um, but this is, this is really great. So I'm super pleased with this. And then I'm gonna set up um, a place for them to cure out in a cold frame um, for about a week, week and a half. And, uh, and then they'll be ready to eat because sweet potatoes do need to be cured. It's what sweetens them up. And uh, so we definitely want to walk through that process because if not, we'll be just kind of disappointed in the flavor. So, um, all right, I'm gonna finish this up and we'll get back to you guys. Hey guys, so 
This is a cold frame that my husband built for me years ago and um, I learned from a different channel and I'll link it below his video below. He cures his uh, sweet potatoes in a greenhouse and this is the closest thing I have to a greenhouse. We had a little plastic one and it didn't make it. Um, so essentially in the past I've used brown paper bags and loaded my sweet potatoes into that and put them in front of a vent. but. We have, again, unseasonably warm temperatures this year. That means the air conditioning is on in our house and not the heat. So it needs a nice humid and warm environment. The sweet potatoes do in order to cure one to two weeks. And so what better thing than a cold frame or a greenhouse? So I'm going to use some old um, metal racks that I had from that greenhouse that bit the dust during a hurricane. And I'm going to load the sweet potatoes onto that and put them inside the greenhouse. I won't leave it sealed up all the time. I'll prop it open a bit because um, I don't want them to cook either. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. And you can see the instructions for how to build this cold frame. Um, it, was a, it was originally built out of two uh, long windows that we had to replace those eventually. Um, but we have the instructions for how to build this on the website. I'll link it below. So a nice surface so that they're not sitting on the sitting on the ground itself. And I'm just using some old bricks to keep these racks up. Doesn't everybody have old bricks laying around? That's an assassin bug. That's what you look like. All right. Prop that in there. Let me get the potatoes. All right. I may have expended my roux apron to the max, but here we go. Oh. And the great thing about the roux is that you can just unhook the ropes. And now it all comes. So let's get these put up. Not washing them. They're going to stay dirty until time to eat. Let's see some ants around here. Like I said, I'm going to post the link in the video of, that I watched about greenhouse curing. His video was super informative and very helpful, so hopefully you'll find it helpful as well. Super pleased with this sweet potato harvest for a raised, you know, for raised bed sweet potatoes. I think it's pretty good. Hopefully these flavors are really going to develop as they cure. I'm even curing these little tiny ones. Because you know they can still be chopped up and roasted. Skin and everything. Okay, and the other thing that he did, like I said, I've always put mine in paper bags. Um, to cover them in, t in old towels to keep the moisture in because they're pretty moist themselves right now from coming up out of the soil. Um, so that will help with the humidity factor inside 
um, the cold frame. So let me go get some old towels and go from there. So I'm going to go ahead and close it up with the intention that when it gets warm in the morning to come and open it back up. And if you're like me and you need a reminder, um, use your phone, just set an alarm, 10 a.m., you know, crack open the greenhouse or whatever. It takes about a week, week and a half, maybe two, if you just don't have time. We've all been there. So this is how I harvest and cure sweet potatoes. So I hope you guys found that helpful. See you later.